Welcome to the Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. Here's your host, Bishop Larry Gators. Thank you, Brother Andrew. We are so excited to be back on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio in Media Group here in New York City, New York. Again, this is your host and moderator tonight, Bishop Larry Gators. Please, right now, go on to the Life Radio Network, 92.9 FM, 1460 AM on your dial, or also you can listen online anywhere throughout the world on liferadionj.com, liferadionj.com. You can also call us in uh, into our live, live broadcast right now at 609 614 3801. Again, beloved, 609-614-3801. Though you may be uh, connected into the studio tonight, but you will not have access uh, to our guests because we want to make sure that the background is quiet. Also, you, if you want to ask uh, our great, great uh, guests here tonight, uh, any of your questions dur- during the duration of tonight's broadcast, you can begin to send in those emails right now at Global Spiritual Revolution Radio at Yahoo.com. Again, quickly, beloved, Global Spiritual Revolution Radio at Yahoo.com. We are also internationally syndicated through the iHeart Radio Network and the iHeart Media Group, uh, also here in New York City, New York, and also through Apple uh, Podcasts and through the Google Podcasting Network. Uh, Saints of God, it has been... Uh, a long while since we've had this great man of God on. And I believe last time we had him on, maybe a year, year and a half ago, and exposing Alcoholics Anonymous. And, and we've had so many of uh, emails, thousands of emails for the past year, year and a half, and, and asking the bishop, when are we going to have uh, the general back on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio? He is no longer... A guest here. We have, uh, I believe, the number one deliverance scholar, the number one deliverance minister in America and on this planet right now. And all of you deliverance ministers, such as myself, who are young coming up um, in this powerful paradigm called deliverance ministry, you have got to sit at the feet of this great man of God. He is the general of deliverance, a 12-star apostolic general, uh, world-renowned author, teacher, apostle, uh, the Honorable Dr. Ivory Hopkins. He is the senior pastor in the presiding apostle and prelate of the world-renowned Pilgrims Ministry of Deliverance there in Georgetown, Delaware. And go to their website right now at pilgrimsministry.org pilgrimsministry.org and the theme of this powerful ministry is I have one clear cut agenda to preach balance deliverance across the nations oh my again I have one clear cut agenda to preach balance deliverance across the nations and and we're going to be uh, discussing a very powerful and prolific topic tonight that a lot of pastors really don't want to want to delve into and that topic of our conversation would be uh, signs of sexual addiction in ministry signs of sexual addiction in ministry who counsels the counselor um, the honorable apostle dr. ivory Hawkins uh, Dad, thank you so much for uh, just taking the time out of your business schedule to be back with us here again on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. It is an absolute pleasure to be back with you. I've been looking forward to this, and the topic we got tonight is such a hot topic, but I believe extremely necessary in the times and seasons that we live in. Because I believe this, Bishop, if many of us leaders could identify the uh, patterns of addiction, uh, sexual addiction that operates in ministry, we will be able to get the help that we need. And I always use the word we inclusive because I never like to stand in the pulpit in an ivory tower and look down at folks as if they've got something that I'm incapable of having or having to deal with. We need Jesus. We need deliverance. But the subject yes. we are touching tonight, when we're talking about sex, the sexual predator in ministry, we're going to be talking about some pretty prolific things, but we're going to do it with grace, dignity, and mercy, but we are going to call demons what they are. 
<laughs> oh, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, 609-614-3801. Again, beloved, 609-614-3801. And when you're calling, you will not be passed into um, the studio here tonight, but you can still hear um, this powerful and prolific apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ. Man of God, before we get into the furtherance of tonight's broadcast, can you lead us into the mind of God in prayer in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ? Father, we come before you tonight, Lord God. We're touching a subject, Lord God, that has entered deeply into your body, your body that you purchased with your own blood, Father. Father, we pray for both the victim and also the predator. I ask in Jesus' name that your Holy Spirit bring the grace of your forgiveness, bring uncover the things that are being hidden, and bring healing to both victim and the predator, Father. For Lord God, you said that we which are spiritual restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. My brother and I this night will not be on this broadcast trying to shame or call out any particular creature, but we will deal with, completely expose, how that these spirits operate. So we ask for the spirit of wisdom. We ask for the spirit of grace Mm. as we speak. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, thank you so much, dear Apostle, 609-614-3801. And we have um, emails are coming in right now, about the dozens, at Global Spiritual Revolution Radio at Yahoo.com. Again, quickly, beloved, Global Spiritual Revolution Radio at Yahoo.com. Here on the Life Radio Network, 92.9 FM, 1460 AM on your dial. And you can also listen to us right now online at LifeRadioNJ.com, LifeRadioNJ.com. Um, uh, signs of sexual addiction with the Honorable Apostle Dr. Ivory Hopkins. Um, man of God, before we get into that specific topic tonight, um, uh, the coronavirus, um, I got word today um, from a, a close uh, friend of mine uh, in black conservatism um, from St. Louis, Missouri, that uh, one of uh, our pastors, my dear friend, um, who is uh, 67 years old, uh, a bishop in uh, St. Louis, East St. Louis specifically, has been uh, diagnosed with the coronavirus. And at men of God, what in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ is going on? Um, the National Basketball Association has suspended um, possibly for the rest of the season, probably uh, Major League Baseball, the NFL, uh, na- the National Hockey League is, t- is talking. Next is going to be the churches. W- what is the mind of God speaking to you uh, concerning this global uh, hysteria, this global pandemic called fear, as well as the coronavirus? Well, I, I believe prophetically that the Bible speaks strongly of a time would come during the end time that men's hearts would be failing them by fear. And mm-hmm. I'm seeing this coronavirus, some of the reaction to it, and I think it should have the attention and the recognition of caution that there is a problem going on. Um, I have no finger to point at, but everything in me makes me feel that this was a manufactured uh, virus. Uh, put yes. together. I think two streams came together and this thing came out of it. But whichever way this virus is happening, it has called the attention of the entire world. Um, mm. I do counseling all over the globe uh, every week. Now, a strange thing happened to me about two weeks ago. I was talking to someone in another country, and the boat that they were on as an actress took and actually shut down all of the cast of a theater, shut them all down, paid Mm -hmm. them, and sent them home. They had been in about six months practicing. They were preparing to launch this vessel and go forward. The strange thing is there was never any deep explanation as to why this boat that had put that much money into practicing all of a sudden drew back and is not launching on the same schedule. Mm. And in a few days later, now I'm not trying to stir up some type of, uh, <laughs> you know, 
deep hidden contra secret. But a yes. few days later, we started hearing about this particular virus. Mm. One of the things the young lady said to me, and I, I, as we were talking, um, and I said it to her as well, I said, you know, I, I almost feel like you didn't lose a job that God was protecting you. I had no idea what I was saying when I said that to her. You right. didn't lose a job. I think God protected you and pulled y'all all out for a season. And I believe that God is going to keep us. We pray and yes. we believe God for healing, even for our brother that's been affected in St. Louis. We pray for healing in yes. Jesus' name. Uh, and, yes. and, and, and it will behoove all of us to do whatever is wise as far as keeping our bodies and ourselves in a position not to be contaminated. But I really, mm -hmm. I'm really am feeling on my spirit that this particular virus was activated by mankind. I yes. don't believe it's just something, what, what we call an act of God. Right. I mean, so I'll, I'll back up and mm -hmm. let you uh, speak, man of God, and give your opinion. But I don't trust the way that this thing is moving and the timing that it's moving. And I don't like it becoming a political weapon for anybody. Right. Exactly. I hate that, man of God, that, that it has been weaponized into a political psyop. And it, as the Lord um, is so powerfully speaking to you, as always, man of God, a scripture came to my spirit concerning the pestilence. Mm -hmm. that walketh by day. Mm -hmm. So a pestilence has legs. I agree with you 100%, uh, Apostle. This is a man-made bio weapon, mm -hmm. okay? It is a man-made bio weapon. We have, we've had some guests on, I believe, the last two to three weeks talking about these, this contagion, right, this COVID, capital C-O-V-I-D, and incidentally, that COVID word, when translated into Hebrew, into English, reveals the word Kobe. And so that's another topic for another day. But this, I believe that this is a bioweapon mm -hmm. uh, that has now gotten out of control to the point now where it's cutting into the billions and billions of dollars of government's man of God. So uh, I, I agree with you 100%. This is a bioweapon. Um, but you know what, man of God, I want you to correct me if I'm wrong. God is in full control. God, God is, is in full control. Go right God is oh. in full control. Let, let me share this with you, with you, man of God. I had told our church about uh, early at the end of last year, I was telling them that we were going to go through a season uh -huh. of economic prosperity. And then we were going to, that stock market itself was going to get hit by something that would shake it. And I had no idea that a virus would come that would, that would shake the foundation of the travel industry like it has, that would shake tourism like it has, that would cause the very uh, 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 NFL, I mean the uh, uh, basketball and everything else, our schools and everything being affected this rapid. And stock markets got hit off of the breath of this thing. Mm -hmm. And I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Apostle, before we get into the sexual addiction of, of leaders in ministry, I believe that it was a, a plan to ultimately hurt President Donald J. Trump in some way. Because they couldn't get in through the Russian hoax, they couldn't they couldn't get in through the Ukrainian hoax, and now they're using this against him. You know, um, I don't think that's going to work. Um, what's the year, man of God? No, I absolutely don't believe it's going to work. I talked on a local radio show here in Delaware this morning, and I said openly, I said I find it a deep irony that a virus comes through like this and immediately. They make the president liable for the actions of a virus that come from another country, mm. which is which by all common sense is ridiculous. That would be just as ridiculous as blaming President Obama for a storm that comes through uh, uh, Louisiana. That's crazy. Right. 
that, that they, have, and they want to weaponize it. They're trying to politically weaponize this, this virus. But when oh I hear let, let me say this, man of God, when yeah. I hear politicians, our country or any other place, <laughs> take stuff like this and weaponize it, I can tell the level of less lack of integrity they have by the Come methods they use. Because this oh. is something that this is too much for people's lives to be used as a political weapon to play mm. games. Man of God, I, I, I've got to say this, and forgive me um, again for just uh, going further into this corona, in, into this COVID coronavirus. The Holy Spirit spoke to me earlier today and asked me concerning um, the, these, not just the pharmaceutical corporations who are going to make billions of dollars, because when they create a bioweapon, they also create a cure for it. But also the Holy Spirit told me to really delve into the companies out of China, Malaysia, Mm -hmm. Singapore, Thailand, and South Korea who make not just the facial facial mask, Mm -hmm. okay, but also these hand sanitizers. And, and, And I found out, man of God, today in my research here that we were talking about addiction, and the people not just sexually being addicted, but addicted to power. Uh, and it seems like people who are uh, addicted to power, and, they're, uh, and the cause of that addiction to power, they don't care who gets hurt. But these companies that make these hand sanitizers, a lot of them uh, are owned by the very people who created this virus. And, man, of God, this is wicked. Mm-hmm. This is wicked beyond wickedness. What say you? Absolutely. But it is nothing new to us, uh, even in America, how that a country, a, a political group, a, 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 a people with an ideology will pollute a, a pure block of people. That I, I Just about a, last year, I had did some dealings in Los Angeles, and I knew that Kid Row was created by letting some of the people that were institutionalized for mental problems, let them out on the street. Mm. When I went there, I saw people who were mentally deranged and damaged. I worked 11 years in a mental institution. I knew Mm. that some of them I saw walking around were people who should have been in an institutional, having institutional care Mm -hmm. for their mental problems. But the state of California did that. One of their high officials in the government gave out a ruling that opened those doors. And and cities, states, and countries have a habit that when it suits them for a political or economic reason, they will turn loose things on the populace to both control it, confuse it, and make it more needy towards them. It's a sad truth, but it is a pure fact. Oh, my God. And you, you talk about Los Angeles. Um, i got a, a very good friend of mine, a colleague in the gospel, Dr. E. King Graves, that told me uh, not too long ago that um, there was a witch um, uh, that was ordained by the city of Los Angeles, California, in 1968. I kid you not, man of God, and we can get into that later on, but uh, sexual addiction uh, within ministry. Uh, who counsels the counselor? You made a statement, <laughs> man of God, uh, that is so powerful, and the, and, and the statement that you made was, you don't do what you do because you have a demon. <laughs> You often get demons because of what you're doing. Explain that for the man of God, now, because I've never heard of that terminology before. Amen. What I was saying when I made that statement, that mm-hmm. remember my, my main motto is to preach balance, deliverance across the nation. I've been close to 45 years in deliverance wow. ministry. I was in it when, a, when they were trying to form it and present it. Right. As a kid preacher in my early 20s, so what I saw happening 
was that the teaching about mm-hmm. demons and how they operate tend to cause some people to believe that their actions were being driven by demons and their responsibility was not as strong as what it should be. And it only gave demonic bondage a door to keep entering in. Man of God, mm. there is a realm <laughs> in our life that demons gain access by us giving place to them. I think mm. it's chapter 4, verse 27. It yes. says, neither give place to the devil. That word place mm. is so it means license, a door, an opportunity, or a gateway. So mm. when the Bible says we uh, don't give place to the devil, in other words, all of us have a propensity to desire or lust after something. But we don't have to follow through with every lustful thought that comes to our mind. Right. But but when a when a believer does not deal with the lust in their life, it will give the enemy access to create a stronghold that becomes demonized. So that mm. actions did not start with a demon; the actions started with a choice. Oh my goodness! A choice that they had go, power. Go ahead, take your time. Oh, that's so powerful. Go ahead, Apostle. Oh. A choice that they had power through the Holy Spirit to put to death. Mm. About it, in our early days of learning the Word of God, we didn't learn by demons. We didn't. We didn't learn if any man would follow after me, let him deny his demons and take up his cross and follow me. We right. learned, <laughs> when we what we learned said if any man would be in Christ, it's a new creature. That new creature, if he's going to follow Christ, must put to death the deeds of his flesh. But when we do our desires, lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life, demons will attach to it by the same name. So what we mm. have to is the demons naming themselves off of our emotional lack of discipline. Spiritual lack of crucifixion. Wow. So the demons will call themselves lust, lust of the eye. I cast a demon a, a few years ago out of a young lady, and she was very provocative in her dress. And when I cornered the demon in her, the demon straight up said, well, if you got it, you just well flaunt it. And that's exactly what it was doing with her life. The only problem was, she was wounded and bruised by men that would take what she was flaunting. So she had many sexual mm. partners, but her heart was being torn with each one of the rendezvous. She would give her body, bless her heart, but and she would give it to be seen, give it to be loved, dressed to be seen, dressed to be watched. And instead of the men appreciating her mind, her soul, who she was, they went after just what that demon said. If you got it, flaunt it. <laughs> now, we'll, now, we'll hear a weird one. And this is not one of those old line Pentecostal, wear a long dress, tie your head up until nobody can tell who you are. <laughs> Go ahead, Foster. <laughs> when she got delivered from that demon, she started dressing differently. And I'm not talking about she wore a dress clean down to her bottom of her feet. Right. So for some reason, she shut her chest up. For some yeah. reason, she wasn't wearing things so tight because, I'm going to say this, and I'll probably get lose three friends tonight. Go ahead, Pastor. The, the stronghold in her, let me tell y'all something. Yes. The <laughs> stronghold in our lives will dress us. They will They will put fashion on us. They, they will put stuff on us, have us dressing and acting in ways to attract what that stronghold wants to build in our lives. Mm, mm, mm. So, mm, mm, mm. so that so when I talk about we don't out of de- we don't do what we do because we got a demon. We often get demons because of what we're doing. If we don't crucify and put to death, I forewarn y'all listening at me right now. Hear yes. me well, radio listeners. 
We're living in a society that does not want anyone to tell us the truth. Matter of fact, the most, I think one of the echoing cries is don't judge. Do you know what happens when people don't use judgment? (laughs) Error must fall. Listen to this. You tell me don't judge. Do you realize when we stop judging, error must rule? Error must rule. It, we have to judge and determine. Everything in the world is governed by laws of judgment. Jeez. The sun is judged to come up at a certain time. The, if the planets will not come close together because of the judgment of God that says mm-hmm. to move any further out of, your, out of this way, it will cause weather catastrophes and everything else. But we human beings, we get cute. And now we're living in the season of don't judge. So we do some of the doggone things that open the door to demons and then wonder why we're bound. I'm going to tell you why you're bound. Ready? Mm-hmm. Yes, because you didn't judge. Ooh. Oh, Lord have mercy. Mm. Mm, <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Repeat I that again, Apostle. Oh, I repeat pause. that again. I oh. pause. Well, the, the reason why we're so bad is because we didn't judge. You're wondering why certain strongholds are reigning when everybody says do whatever you want, immorally, sexually, or whatever. Then we will reap the whirlwind. The chickens will come home to roost. It's just the way things are. Mm. Look, most of you out there listening to me by the grace of God, and I say this, and this covers my family, your family, all our family. How many times have we disobeyed God's laws and reaped the reward of it? We, we made his laws in the way we treated each other or the way we've done or the way we brought children in the world or the way we neglected and rejected them. And, and you tell me it didn't have an effect, but you were just having fun. Man of God, one time I preached a sermon. I wished I had kept the tape of it. And the title of the message was, and I was just having fun. <laughs> and I was, come on, it up. Yes, but I almost spoke in tongues. In that message, man of God, I was talking about how that, uh, how that back in the day when I was doing street hustling, doing the dope that I was doing and what have you, pulling, pulling ladies for one night stands, and someone mm. on the line, babies came along. But I was just having fun. Child comes up, and then I, we're all unequipped to take care of it, but we were just mm. having fun. Just having fun. Oh, now, that child goodness. is wanting a father, wanting a mother, deserving to be taught, deserving to be loved, but excuse me, I can't put my attention to it because I wasn't trying to get you, child. I was just having fun. Oh, my goodness. I remember a year, a year and a half ago, you made mention of a term, apostle, and that term is called tagging. Now, again, for our, our listeners out there tonight, what is tagging? What does it mean that a person has been tagged, as we're talking about uh, the signs of sexual addiction? Sexual tagging is why a, a person uses sexuality in a certain sex acts on a person, and what they do, they connect with the person emotionally, and they have contact, uh, connect with the person sexually, physically. And what they do to the person, because of the emotional control and the physical act they're doing, anyone else trying to sleep with that person will not be able to turn them on, including their own husband or wife. Wow. I ran into this demon. I was... I was in I was in the Los Angeles area doing a conference with the group that I worked with called the Watchdogs, and they had this young, beautiful Latino girl. They were praying for, her. and they, they said we cannot seem to break this witchcraft off of this girl. There is a, a controlling spirit on her that we can't seem to break. So when I do a mass deliverance, sometimes I will call out the mass deliverance, and then I will do what I call walk the room. And the workers will already be praying with people, praying with them. So when I got to this young lady, and I always do things respectfully 
and discreetly. I'm not one. I don't, I'm not too keen on doing things that will make anyone embarrassed or have people talking about, oh, did you hear that? I don't like right. doing that, man of God. I like to handle Thank people you. with dignity. I'm a gentleman. Yes. So anyway, uh, I walked over to the ladies as they were trying to break this thing, and that demon would not move. It was growling. It was angry. I said mm. to them, I said, I said, I said, ladies, I said, what's going on? They said, this one here seemed like it just won't move, Apostle. This one here seemed like it just, I said, well, can I take a stab at it? God has graced me at times when he wants to talk with a tremendous yes. word of knowledge, a tremendous mm. word of knowledge and a strong spirit of wisdom. As I, as I knelt down on my knees to go whisper and pray and command the demons to let her go with dignity and discreetly, the Holy yes. Spirit said, the young man that she was with, said, I tagged it, and it's mine. Now, I'm going to be wow. honest. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm <laughs> a fucking black brother, and I'm old school. <laughs> a young Latino lady, something like that in her ear, I had a little trouble with Jesus, not just us with that. <laughs> now, here I oh, have sisters beside me, three sisters beside me, as I'm praying for her, and I said, sis, I said, I'm going to say something in your ear. I said, I don't mean to be disrespectful. And what have you. And she was on the floor, body shaking, body shaking. And I said, no, I'm going to whisper something in your ear, sis. I said, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I, I think that the Lord told me to come at it from this angle. Yes. So I leaned over. I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I command where that young man told you, I've tagged you and it's mine. And oh, when I said that, that demon went ape. She was screaming. That's mm. no, no uncertain terms. I'm not going. She's mine. Ain't no man, her husband, or no other man going to break what I did to her because mm -hmm. what I did to her sexually, coupled with control and witchcraft, she is mine. Well, I mm -hmm. may tell you, the whole of ghost broke that. Because God, she has been espoused to one husband through Jesus Christ, our Lord, and this other guy, I commanded the soul tie, I commanded the act that was done to be broken off of the parts of her body, and I didn't name those parts, because I'm a gentleman, but I asked the Holy Spirit to break the demonic draw to that yes. area and loose her from it. Do you know, man of God, that some people have soul ties with people? Yes. With love. Some people have soul ties with body parts. Now, hear what I just said. Go there on. are some people who have soul ties with other people, human beings. Mm. <laughs> and then there are some people who don't give a hoot about the human being, just no. the human body part. Think oh. about what I just Now oh, you got it. Oh, so you're dealing with what that young man did was he turned her on, I'm a gentleman, and yes. when she would try to be with her real husband after that, he was an old boyfriend. No matter mm. what her husband tried to do to be with his wife, and he should be, and her husband should be, the effect that took place was it had no, it had no effect. So therefore, mm. she, was, she was not responding to her husband. She wanted prayer. And what this young man was actually a, she told me, and I'm not going to name his name, I never do that. The young man that tagged her was a was like a rock star, a Latino rock star, and she used to be like one of his groupies. Oh, okay. So, so now here wow. this young lady gets saved and gets married, but her and her husband's marital bed relationship, the Bible they said, Hebrews 13 says, marriage 13, 4, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 4, marriage is honorable in all, yes. and the bed is undefiled. Hormones right. and adulterers, God will judge. So when I came against that stronghold, I let that demon know that the Bible said that their marriage is honorable in all, and their yes. bed is undefiled. So we commanded all defilement, every evil soul tie. And whatever way he tagged her sexually, we commanded the spiritual stronghold that was released in there to come out, and they did. Oh, my goodness. A a again, man of God, um, as we are dissecting the signs of sexual addiction, 
within ministry here tonight uh, with our apostle and teacher, the Honorable Dr. Ivory Hopkins. Continue, continue to send in your, your question, my, my God. They're coming in. Um, we got more than almost 500 questions. My and God. We're not, even, we're, we're not even at the uh, at, barely at the halfway mark, past the halfway mark. All right, uh, Global Spiritual Revolution Radio at Yahoo.com. Global Spiritual Revolution Radio at Yahoo.com. Uh, also, man of God, I heard your powerful teaching on Facebook concerning uh, this sexual uh, addiction. Can you share with our audience tonight concerning this, I believe, this five year old kid who was adopted? And this kid was doing sexual things, and and how did this kid learn this? Can you share that with our audience tonight, uh, as we're talking about the signs I, I of was, sexual addiction? I, I was called on a on a I was called on a deliverance case of an adopted child. The child was five years old, but it was just so happened that the child was blessed by God to have a spirit filled deliverance mother and father. Yes. So. When they came in the family, the family calls me because they know that I uh, work with uh, dealing with strongholds like this. And they said, well, we've got one now, Ivory, that it's going to really blow your mind. And they talked to me and they said that this five-year-old child was doing at five years old adult things for pictures at five years old. And I'm not going to name the list because I'm trying to stay rated on your radio the right way. Yes, sir. But what adults would do, seeing pornography, knowing tricks, come on, all that mess. The come stuff on now. Some of us want to get out of our head. This kid was doing automatically. Mm-hmm. This child was mm-hmm. rescued from a family that had a predatory demon in that family of lust and perversion. Now, let me explain mm-hmm. something to you about a predatory spirit in a family line. Yes, sir. Some of you that are listening out here at the radio. And I, and I ask the Holy Spirit to just ever uh, not to not allow you to trigger when I'm talking. I yes. ask the Holy Spirit to be gentle with you as, and the words that I'm speaking. But, man of God, there are family lines that have what we call predatory spirits. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take my time and, and work with Take your time. Take your time. These demons get in a family line, and they will almost think. Now, most of y'all talk about spirit marriage or marine spirits. These are not marine spirits nor a spirit marriage. It is a predatory lust spirit that actually got in the family line through rape and molestation. Mm-hmm. Are you heard? Not, through, not through a ritual, not through someone going to the altar, not to someone calling on Mama Walter, Mama Walter, <laughs> or any of those other spirits. Separate this from the marine spirit teaching. <laughs> Yes. Separate this from the incubus and succubus spirit. Because this is not now. either of those guys. Ooh, this, this particular demon, when it gets in a family line, some of its characteristics are it will cause incest in a family line. Mother and mm. father that get hooked up actually have been, either both of them or either of them, have been molested more than one time. When the child is born, that spirit manifests and does some of the same thing to the child that it did to the mother. Man of God, one time, one time a person said to me, and, and it was heartbreaking, we were delivering this young lady. The power of God was healing her left and right, and we were breaking the of weight, but a station, and she, when, we, when she got to the end, she looked at me and cried. And it, she said, mm. why all my life everybody was always trying to do me? She said, oh everybody God. always tried to do me. All I wanted was love. But there was a predatory spirit in that family line that was activating, these demons will cause you to come in contact with mm. predators. Yes. Are you hearing me? Oh, my God. Teach, Apostle. These spirits will also, now this is why I'm telling you they're not incubus or succubus, or neither are they marine spirits. A predatory rape spirit, it will cause, a, uh, it will cause attacks 
to come against an individual and that person not understand why am I being attacked like this? Yes. What did I do to deserve yes. this? It exactly. is a spirit that can get in a family line and operate. Now, now I'm coming down to the clincher. Go ahead. <laughs> in ministry, Go ahead. Yeah. In ministry, there are some ministers, male and female, that have been have come up and been raised up battling the same spirit of lust. You didn't just gain this strong sex urge you got. It was manufactured by the spirits of lust and perversion in our family lines. Mm. That, and what happened is, and, you, and one of the ways to tell that it is a demon, you were always active, but you had no teacher. So who taught you? Jesus. Now, I'm not talking about you rolled up at 13 and started looking at pornography. And, oh, bam, there you go. <laughs> Uh uh-uh, uh, you can trace the origin. Listen to exactly. me. Listen. If you cannot trace a living date to something that's controlling your life, then it's possible it's beyond the time of your birth and existence, but tagged you after you came out. Does mm. anybody mm. understand what I just said? Oh, that is so powerful. <laughs> These, that that child that had oh a powerful lust demon that was doing right. all kinds of stuff, that child was tagged from the womb. I share this. Mm. I, was in New Jersey. I was in the wonderful state of New Jersey. A young mother comes up in my prayer line. I'm getting ready to pray for her and ask God to bless her and just anoint her, prophetically use her. And all of a sudden, the word of God is said to me, Tell her what I'm getting ready to tell her. Now, she has standing beside her a young child, maybe about seven or eight. I said to her, I said, Mommy, come here. And she came to me. I said, and I told the musician, just keep worshiping. Now, the people were thinking I was just, you know, getting ready to, you know, flow with the music. No, I was using to shut out what I was saying. I didn't want them to hear what I was saying to her. I said to her, I said, Mother. She said, Yes, Apostle. I said, I asked the father to break the spirit of prostitution off of you and your daughter. I said, and she started weeping. I said, that thing wants to activate the same thing on your child that it did on you. Mm. And when I said that, the mother began to weep. And and all of a sudden, I gently was praying for the mother, and the child started manifesting as well. Oh my. Wisdom dictates you don't go screaming and hollering at a child. Come out, Pastor Hate Spirit. Come out, Spirit of Hordom. That is ignorant. Mm. I took the mother. I prayed deliverance for the mother and the deliverance that I was whispering respectfully in the mother's ear, the child who didn't hear it started manifesting as well and God gave us a two for one that night. Oh my Lord. Oh my my. And I remember you said, man of God, that the sign of a generational curse or stronghold in a family bloodline is when that the person cannot pinpoint the origin of it. Exactly. exactly. Oh, my. Exactly. Go ahead, Pops. Break it down or, for me. Or oh. another thing, you look at your family history. I'm talking about the skeletons that they let out. Because families, families are usually <laughs> I know. Go ahead, I, know I have a way of saying things. I, God made me that way, man. <laughs> Teach. <laughs> Families have a way of concealing even their predators. Yes. Uh, many mm. of families, predators have gotten away with stuff. I mean, you, it, will, it would amaze you, Bishop, how many 55 and 60-year-old women that I prayed for and mm. that me and Evelyn mm. has ministered to, our team has ministered to, that revert back to like eight and nine years old from the damaged emotion that is affected by rape and molestation and also the spiritual strongholds that it puts, let alone the emotional uh, bondage that operates in it. This right. is why, this is why demons will act lie dormant in a leader that's not delivered and eventually Jeez. come to the surface and contaminate the sanctuary. Oh, my God. Apostle, I got to say this. I, I, you know what? I have been teaching that 
um, for a long time that many times, because uh, when, when we look at the life of King David as well, uh, as you are so powerfully articulating the signs of sexual addiction, who counsels the counselor here on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. And, and it seems like that you can get, like King David, gifted musician, gifted leader, but there was something in his bloodline, Apostle, that lay dormant for years. So it is possible for gifted men and women of God who are gifted Okay, in ministry, but yet but there is a, there's a demon that's dormant. Go ahead, Apostle. Man, man of God, here goes the grace of God, but yet also the inroads of demonic bondage, the inroad of the lineage mm. of David. David yes. came to Ruth. If I remember correctly, there was a, a thread of the Moabite that was in that lineage. The yes. Moabites were very perverted, Okay. So in David's mm. lineage was that propensity. When David did what he did on the roof, Come I took now. Bathsheba from Uriah and killed that man for his wife because he was yes. pregnant. Yes. He, his, her grandfather, Ahathophel, was David's counselor. Mm. So David, David, David disrespects and dishonors one of his own counselors. The spirit of lust and perversion in a leader will discount even the leadership role that they walk in. They will oh, do something Lord. against their own authority for their lust. So, Ooh. can we talk? Take your time. Can we talk? So David, Go ahead. So David turns around, steals Uriah's wife from the top of the roof lusting. Now I have to feel her grandfather is angered Wounded and hurt because the man that he gives counsel, the man that he backs up, and I'm going to say it loud, and I ain't going to be ashamed. Go I ahead. know Go ahead. The leaders in churches who have went after their elder's family, their mm. elder's daughter, their elder's wife, mm. because that demon of perversion was in them. They, they gave their life to the Lord, but they didn't give the rest of the, get the deliverance that they need. So anyway, going back to David. David yes. turns around Ooh. because of what he did. A half of field tells Absalom David's son, he, David's former advisor advises his son Absalom to sleep with his concubines on the right. same uh, a roof that he took Bathsheba on. Mm. Now, that was, a, that was a powerful hit. When he slept with his father's concubine, that was a direct slap. And it was not only perverted, but it was a slap in the face of a king. For, no, for when you take the king's concubines, you take a great deal of his authority. But, That's Absalom, right. but Absalom did it by, by Ahapophel's advice and because of what he did to Bathsheba. And what David did to Bathsheba opened the doors to the bondage that was in Solomon. Mm -hmm. 700 wives, 300 concubines that led him away from God for a period. Also, David's daughter, I think her name was Dinah, gets raped by David's son. Absalom's sister gets raped by one of David's sons, and Absalom kills him for it. All through the mm -hmm. open door of lust and perversion. Are you understanding? Oh, one, my teacher, awesome. Wynn Worley, one of my teachers, Wynn Worley, that I learned, as I always like to tell people, I was a kid in the 17th row. Nothing special, nothing all that. I was just Brother Ivory, and still is Brother Ivory. But what I learned from Wynn Worley was this. It was a principle called the walking time bomb. Now, what is a walking time bomb? A walking time bomb is a minister with a ministry that has not got delivered of the lust that is in him or her. They have not submitted to the Holy Spirit, mm. breaking, that, breaking that bondage. They conceal it, they hide it, they bury it because they got a title. They got a recognition why I have a ministry. What demons will do is hold back until that ministry is at a high level of effectiveness. At that place of effectiveness, those demons will take and cause that preacher to manifest because they already have troops in him already or in her already. 
And then the next thing you know, you have a nationwide TV broadcast, and then you're sleeping with somebody, and it kills the whole broadcast. Or you're doing evangelistic work, and they find you with a prostitute. This is happening. This is happening all over the world. That I've been preaching. I, I, I have known. This is so powerful. Yes. I, I have known of preachers that have gotten in this. Man of God, I might share. Slow me down. Slow me down when you need to, man of God. Because this, this here subject, I have a passion for it because I know listening on the radio, listen, my brother and sister, you are battling lust. You are battling that stronghold. You got hidden yes. pornography because you have a stronghold, bro. You have you have been sleeping with some of your members and doing things in you sometimes in your family and what have you because of the struggle. Brother, sister, you're going to have to get delivered. Your title is not going to hide you. Eventually, what's in us comes out of us. When, you, when we look at Scripture here, 1 Samuel chapter 2, verse 22, check out Samuel's sons, Eli. And what happened? Come on now. Uh, Eli, uh, I mean, Eli, uh, Eli's sons, not Samuel, but Eli's sons. First Samuel 2.22. Now, Eli was very old, and he heard all that his sons did unto Israel, and how they lay with the women that assembled at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. That door of the tabernacle of the congregation, that was the, gate, that was the gateway entrance to the worship of God. That was a significant positional place. And these boys caught these girls as they were going into God. There are many leaders out there who have lust demons. You have been catching the, the daughters of Zion who just simply go for the gate. The charisma that is in us, man of God, with the anointing that God put on us, male and female, it carries with it a charisma with it. It ca- yes. That charisma causes people to like you, love you, respect you, and some will even be enamored and follow you. It's like a drug. But here goes the problem. If you are not delivered, that thing will, will, become, will change from charisma, gifting, to perversion, controlling. And, Apostle, can I jump in here and... and- uh, it, it sounds yeah. It sounds like we got a, a slight echo in the back. You may have your speaker on, but uh, you said something that it was. I mean, you're taking this, you're escalating this into a new level. We have with this um, the general of deliverance, the dean of all deliverance ministers here in the United States and around the world, the Honorable Apostle Dr. Ivory Hawkins, here and only here on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio, as we are discussing um, the signs of sexual addiction in ministry, who counsels the counselor here, again, with Dr. Ivory Hawkins. I may mention many times to so many pastors that a lot of us have been gifted with charisma. Mm-hmm. We are gifted with the power of attraction. Now, when all of these preachers to hear me, and Pastor knows this, um, because you've been in the living probably a lot longer I've been alive. But the thing is, with these giftings, with the power of attraction, all right, charisma, if we are not anointed and if we don't stay consecrated, and keep all of these doors closed so that demons won't enter into us. It seems like the demon can use our personality, our charisma, and the law of attraction to destroy not just us, but our families in the ministry. Am I correct in saying this, Holy Apostle? Absolutely. And I love the term law of attraction because guess what? It will draw people to your ministry that Mm. has been damaged or wounded by the same thing that that predatory spirit feeds off of. Yes. And what happens is, if you get your hands hold to it, it will pull both the minister and the victim right Mm. into the same trap. It'll get a two-for-one on them. I've seen it happen many times. Oh, my God. Um, Tim, we're going to go into a quick uh, three-minute break here, and we have with us the Honorable Dr. Ivory Hawkins. He is the senior apostle uh, in, in the senior prelates of the Pilgrim's Ministry uh, of Deliverance there in Georgetown, Delaware. Now, if you want to purchase their books, their CDs, DVDs, all of their materials, go to Pilgrim's Ministry 
dot o r g again beloved pilgrimsministry dot o r g because this great man of God has one clear cut agenda, and that agenda is to preach ba- balanced deliverance across the nation. Get out your credit cards right now. Go to pilgrimsministry.org and purchase not only who counsels, the counselor, but all of the other books and materials that this great man of God has here and only here on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. We will be back in about two to three minutes' time uh, with Dr. Ivory Hopkins all the way from Bridgetown, Delaware. He's a con contract killing machine representing the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. We'll see you here in about two to three minutes time here on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. Welcome back to the Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. Here's your host, Bishop Larry Gators. Thank you so much, Brother Andrew. Welcome back to our number two here on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. And we are so excited tonight to have back with us by popular demand, the, this 12-star apostolic general in the Dean of All Deliverance Ministers here, not just here in the Western Hemisphere, but around the world. And that is the Honorable Dr. Uh, Apostle Ivory Hopkins, all the way from Bridgetown, Delaware. Go to his website right now at pilgrimsministry.org, pilgrimsministry.org, and he has one clear-cut agenda. And that agenda, ladies and gentlemen, is to preach balanced deliverance across the nation, pilgrimsministry.org. Get out your credit cards right now. Buy up everything that they have right now, and I guarantee you, uh, your ministry would never be the same. And by the way, that the name of this witch that was ordained by the county of Los Angeles in 1968 was a woman by the name of Louise Eubner, capital H-E-U-B-N-E-R. And matter of fact, she has a, uh, a, 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 a certificate by the county of Los Angeles with the seal of the county of Los Angeles on it going back to 1968. And this is the reason why Hollywood or Holly Wan is under a curse. And it's up to us as the uh, apostolic church here in the 21st century to break it. All right, uh, 609-614-3801, signs of sexual addiction in ministry with uh, Apostle Dr. Ivy Hopkins. And Dr. Hopkins, before we go further into this powerful and, and prolific uh, topic, uh, if, if a minister, if a young uh, man of God, young woman of God wants to learn about ministry and in and, and the school, uh, reveal the name of the school that you're the chancellor over and give them information, dear apostle, how they can apply uh, into this powerful uh, school deliverance. Yes. You can uh, learn. I- I am a part of what we call RDU, Rapa, De- Rapa Deliverance University, where the founder is Dr. Jackie Green. I'm also a co-founder. I'm an East Coast Chancellor for the university. And you can mm-hmm. find that university on the website called RapaDeliveranceUniversity.org, RapaDeliveranceUniversity.org. Or just go on the web and type Rapa Deliverance University and type the name Jackie Green. And it pulls up our website. It talks about the curricular and the classes. And I even have a video of myself and Dr. Green. Oh, and there's a number of courses that one can get. So once again, the name of it is Rapa Deliverance University of Practical Ministry, RDU. Rapa Deliverance University of Practical Ministry. And I actually, the very book that we are talking about tonight is a yes. book that I am the author of called who counsels the counselor? They are doing a class, a six-week class, in this particular book. And was just so happened I was graced and blessed for, for Dr. Gaper, Bishop Gaper, to have me on talking about it. So uh, check out Rapa Deliverance University, a practical ministry, Dr. Jackie Green. And as you mm-hmm. read the information, you see how to sign up for the school. You, it tells you how the curricula and the classes go. And it will really bless you. Now, man of God, if I can, 
Amen. Thank and by know. the way, if you're trying to get this book that I'm using right now, uh, 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 Bishop Gaffer gave it to you several times. It's on our website, pilgrimsministry.org, pilgrimsministry.org, and you can get the book, Who Counsels the Counselor? Now, man of God, we sort of stopped at a spot where I was yes. sharing about uh, one of my mentors that began to talk to me about a walking time bomb. And I mm. said that a walking time bomb was strongholds in a minister's life that they don't deal with, like the, like the lust we're talking about. I've, I've known down through the years evangelists, teachers, prophets, ministers. Some of you hear about it today. You hear about it today, how that, that they have such an anointed conference but get into sexual bondage and strongholds after a powerful meeting. How this happens is they have what we call latent or dormant spirits in them, mm. and I mean it, demons in them that have mm. never been delivered. Now, the demons are not in their spirit band. The demons can affect the mind, will, and emotions, and they can also a a attack body parts. Our spirit man is sealed until the day of redemption. So what these demons will do is, through the non-crucifixion of the self-life, of the carnal nature, through illicitly practicing sex, if I will go out here and start sleeping with women on my wife, it's called an adultery. And it will open the door to strongholds of perversion and bondage. And what happens is I would be running around preaching conferences while committing adultery or going out on the streets. This has happened to some ministers. And some of you that are listening at this broadcast, I love you. But I want to pre warn you. That stronghold of where you're cruising at night after a conference or pastor where you're sleeping with members in your church, Pastor, you have a demon. You need to be delivered, and God will do so. Now, here goes signs that you have a latent or dormant spirit of lust. What many ministers face and secretly conceal is a spirit of lust that lay hidden and seemingly come up in their lives and manifest out of nowhere. But the mm -hmm. truth is, these spirits were there all along, waiting for the right moment <laughs> to to take down the minister and the ministry. Now, they are latent. This word latent applies to a power or quality that has not yet come forth, but may emerge and develop. And that's what these demons do. They lay low, and they slowly emerge and will develop. They're also dormant. The word dormant suggests the inactivity of something as a feeling or power as though it was sleeping. So what you have is something that is latent, something that a quality that has not yet come forth, it hasn't emerged yet, it's hidden. But it's laying dormant, waiting to awake at the right time. Remember, when you're dealing with spiritual warfare, you're dealing with devils, and you're out here doing kingdom work, you are in direct battle with strategic warfare. There are demons in many of our lives that will not manifest until it will appropriately destroy more people. Mm. And that's why when you get a, and I'm trying not to name certain leaders, because I don't want to look like I'm picking on any particular but when any of us have, have large exposures, and then God blesses us, the Lord raises us up, and then we find ourselves in immorality, if I got into immorality, it would affect my children and grandchildren. That's bad enough. It would affect my church and ministry. That's bad enough. It would mm -hmm. affect all of those who are believing in the God that I serve and, 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 and learning from the things that are given. Now, I know we say real quick, you need to follow a God, not man. If right. somebody you care about that is your mentor falls, it will have an effect on you. Now, everybody ain't going to turn over and backslide themselves, but there are some people that will backslide, and some will even go into the same perversion they saw their leader operate in. Mm. Oh, my goodness. So let's say you have um, 
a minister or someone even in deliverance who is called into that vocation man of God. Uh, they're called without, a que- without question. Mm-hmm. But what you're saying, if they don't deal with their demon, mm-hmm. that demon will have to deal with them. Am, am I correct in saying that, sir? Man of God, listen to me. This is just straight-up warfare. This is the nature of the beast. You are not going to keep taking out princes. You're not going to take, keep taking out strong fallen ones and not think that they're not going to retaliate. And if you give them fuel for the fire, they will come back at you with it at the most inappropriate, embarrassing, church-shattering, ministry-destroying time. Mm. And they love destroying credibility. If they can destroy your credibility... Matter of fact, the Bible said a good name is rather to be desired than fine silver, and demons will go after it. Did you notice in the book of Timothy, 1 Timothy, I believe it is, chapter, um, what is it, 1 Timothy one twenty one? it talks about flee you for lust at war. That's what, 2 Timothy 2.22. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, the apostle Paul tells Timothy to flee you for lust. That yes. wars against his soul. Now, why would he tell this young bishop these words? Because yes. he knew that this young man not only had an, had an anointing as a bishop and a son in the gospel, but he also had a self-life that had lust with it that he had to flee. Mm. Matter of fact, I like the word flee. Because that's exactly what Joseph did rather than sleep with Potiphar's wife. The boy that's right. That didn't cast the demon out of Joseph. Come on now. Mm. Please don't take the liberty and make it an excuse for your lack of crucifixion. Nobody cast the demon out of Joseph. And guess what? Girlfriend might have looked pretty good. And the opportunity was really set up nice. But he chose. To flee you for lust that yes. was warring against his soul. She got mad and lied. Y'all know the story. They throwed him in yes. jail, but you know how God brought him out. But my point <laughs> is this. Yes. Had he not resisted, mm. he would have come under bondage. These strongholds are lying dormant to destroy ministry. I want to share a testimony and uh, share it as, as strong as I can. Uh, but without ex- exposing anyone, one well-known ministry, one of their leaders, flew to Delaware one time for deliverance. Good man mm-hmm. of God. But spirits of lust was destroying his marriage. But he's a good man of God. But he needed deliverance. Now, here goes where I learned something called sexual imprinting. A, a, an imprint mm-hmm. is a learned behavior that becomes acceptable because it was taught to you by someone who has influence over your life, like a parent, a mentor. It's an action, be it, be it twisted or not, somehow in your mind it becomes validated, although you struggle because you know it's wrong. Now, watch this. Are you able to follow me, man of God? Take your time. This is so good. This is so good. Oh. So. The, 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 the pastor flies into Delaware for deliverance. Right. God is moving mightily. I'm mm. counseling with him. I don't just shout at demons. I like to counsel, meaning talk yes. to them <laughs> to find out the root cause as to why the bondage is repeating itself. And at mm. one point, about, we talked from 8 o'clock to about 12, some praying, intermittent, and some counseling. And when we were talking... He started talking, and he said, you know, when I was young, and he looked like he was staring off into time, time. Mm. He said, when I was young, you know, my daddy could really preach. And I'm looking at him because I'm knowing that he's been slipped into an emotional place, and wherever he's at, something happened there. So I'm being real cool and wise and prayerful. He said, you know, I remember going to my daddy's bedroom, And I ran my hand between the mattress, Mm -hmm. and there was this pornography book. 
And then he said, mm-hmm. boy, my daddy could preach. I said, okay. <laughs> I said, so, and he said, it was really strange. I would know that my daddy was doing pornography and even messing with some of the women in the church. Mm. But boy, my daddy could sure preach. And I said to him, and you have mimicked that same pattern. Mm. You sure preach. But yet, you're still running your hand between that mattress. You're still... You are duplicating the image of your father. You have been imprinted. When I said that, another Mm -hmm. strong male voice came up out of that preacher and said, I'm not coming out. I said, yes, you are. I said, in the name of Jesus, you come out. I've been in it. I'm lusted. I've been in that family line. I was in his daddy. I'm not letting him go. Well, Jesus broke the yoke and cast him out. Jesus Mm -hmm. set him free. This young pastor had never gone through deliverance before in his life, but he was surely convinced it worked after that one. Man of God, mm-hmm. this was called, I, I've written called Sexual Imprinting. That's another one you can get on our website at pilgrimsministry.org. It's called Sexual Imprinting. I learned from that session how that I, a person can learn a behavior and it get taught them growing up and although their rational mind goes, this is wrong, the validation of their respected person, mentor, mom, dad, someone they trust, validation causes them to actually disobey their own conscience. Did you hear what I just said? Oh, my goodness. Actually mm. causes them to disobey their own conscience and get an own conscience and gives the enemy a foothold in their life to a greater or lesser degree. Now, I would be disingenuous if I said, every time you've done something that you've seen in the family, you're going to get seven demons. That's not the truth. (laughs) This is talking about an emotional reaction to unappropriated, inappropriate actions that you patterned, that you patterned. Now, how, how deep a degree that will go depends on your spirit man, the Holy Spirit, and God the Father. All I know is this, this young man, this good man, and he's still free today. Brother is still free today, but he was duplicating verbatim the lust that his father operated in. And if that wasn't enough, the organization he was a part of had quite a few preachers that would go off on conferences, and this was the norm. Apostle, is it possible, and a scripture comes to my mind, and again, uh, a friend of mine, a colleague in the gospel, Dr. E. King Graves, a a great uh, brother, a great man of God out of Los Angeles, had uh, taught me the other night. He said that the human body, the human genome, has 46 chromosomes, right? Mm -hmm. And and so the, in Genesis chapter three, um, from verses one uh, going down to verse five, forty six words did the serpent speak to the woman, but yet the human body has forty six chromosomes. So, wow. which brings me to this question: Is it possible if if that man of God who's in deliverance or that woman of God who's in ministry, if they are not delivered from this tag and this imprinting, is it possible that when they lay hands on another person, that tagging, the imprinting is transferred? Am I correct in saying this, sir? Now, that, that, is, a, that is a formidable question that you ask, and what have you, and I'm glad to answer it. The way that this type of thing goes, Proverbs 26.2, as the bird by wandering and the swaddle by flying, so the curse causeless shall not come. In other words, the, the one, mm-hmm. one translation says, a curse cannot land without a cause. Now, mm-hmm. now, let's put this together. Here you are, you've got this preacher who got all of this lust in him. He's messed up. 
you've got this member sitting in there who's also playing the game, who's also has a propensity to run around doing sexual acts by on the down low, real hidden. Come on now. When them two get together, it will activate the same demon, and yes, there will be an activation and a transfer, yes. But it doesn't just, the devil just can't wake up, yawn, and go, I think I'll jump on this person. <laughs> I will give you another example, case in point. Now, once again, this is not always the case. I'm going to say it one more time. This is not always the case. I dealt with, and hold on, I'm a, I've got to say something to my computer. Yes. Job chapter 31, whole chapter. Yes. Okay. Good enough. Praise God. Good. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, this is I, powerful. And I, I remember I, I, I was like in deliverance probably for about 10 or 15 years. And there was this sister in the Lord who was very, you ever met that kind of sister in the Lord? She's on fire. Yes. She's nice looking, but you better not step up on her. Because girlfriend mm. will beat you in your place and you will remember it. Well, she came to me and she said, Brother Ivory, I need you to intercede with me, brother. She said, I don't understand what is going on. I said, well, what's going on, sis? I almost said her name. I said, what's going on, sis? She said, you know, I've been working at this poultry plant for quite a while. And she said, all of a sudden, these men are making passes at me. She said, they're not being vulgar, but it's like they feel like they got a license to step up on me. She said, now, if I'm doing something wrong, I want God to show me. She said, I've searched my heart. And she said, this, it, this bothers me. And she said, something is wrong because I can't put my finger as to how they went from wouldn't approach me to now feeling like it's okay. Now, mind you, notice the clincher to this man of God. This woman of God did not buy the, uh, the passes. She did not do anything to cause it. Are you ready? Mm, yes, sir. Here, here I am. I go to bed that night, minding my own business, trying to get a half ounce of sleep. The Holy Spirit said, the, the, the demonic spirits have, of lust are activating against her because her husband has pulled his covering, and he is messing with women. He is oh making my God. I was like, hmm. first of all, I was like, oh, no, not bro, no, not bro. I hmm. said, the blood of Jesus, false word, it wasn't. So, oh my God. the Lord said, I'm going to take you to a scripture, and I'm going to show you something. And that verse was Job chapter 31, verses 1. Now, watch this. It says, I made a covenant with mine eyes. Why then should I think upon a maid? That really translates... Why then should I lust upon a maid? Verse 9, if my heart had been deceived by a woman, or if I have laid wait at my neighbor's door, verse 10, then let my wife grind into another and let others bow down. <laughs> now, if you read this in other translations, it goes so far as putting it, the polite version says, let her grind at the meal for another man as if he's her wife. Mm. And Jesus then also. in other translations, when it says, may another stoop unto her, in other words, what was happening to her was the law of reciprocity, <laughs> reaping and sowing. He heard the lust, the husband was operating in lust. And the enemy was had a legal right to send that attack towards his wife, but the wife had the power to receive it and then act on it or not. Oh, my goodness. When we began to pray, Ooh, and, and here's the crazy thing. It wasn't a week later, one of my elders <laughs> said to me, hey, uh, Pastor, have you heard about uh, Pastor so-and-so? And I'm going like, I don't tell him what, what, you know, what I felt God showed me. I said, well, well what's going on? And he said, I never thought this brother would be making passes at the sisters in his church. He said, man, it, it's out. He's been doing that kind of stuff. 
So the attacks that were coming at his wife was because he left her uncovered. I'm a, rather be Adam like he did Eve or Ivory if he does Evelyn. If you don't cover your wife, if you don't stay in a spiritual place, you can bring spiritual attacks of weeping and sowing on your family mm-hmm. and marriage. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying. This is, again, uh, oh, my God, my Lord have mercy. I wish we can keep here all night like Paul was teaching all night. Signs uh, of sexual addiction in ministry and to our global spiritual revolution partners. Notice that word addiction. Add then the word diction. This is where we get the term dictionary or diction, which means words, where uh, people are adding something to their lives that God did not ordain for them to add. Uh, here with Dr. Uh, and one of my favorite teachers uh, within the global body of the Lord Jesus Christ, the Honorable Dr. Apostle Ivory Hopkins, who is well qualified uh, as a 21st century um, apostle and Bishop of Grace in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I've I got to say one more thing before we get into the Q&A of this man of God. And you've you got to come back, man of God, because there's so much to unpack. Um, and, 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 you know, in deliverance, when we're talking about the, the, the seven paradigms uh, to possession, when we're talking about regression, mm-hmm. repression, oppression, right, obsession, yes, depression, sir. suppression, and then possession. So um, which brings me to my next question. Um, is it possible for a child of God to be possessed. We, you know, we're, we are a trichotomy, spirit, soul, and body. Is it possible for the, that child of God or even that deliverance minister to be demonically possessed? Now, here goes a, here goes a unique thing. Most of us are, are, are on the side of deliverance where I work from, we, yes. we believe that the word possessed, don't demonoxomiate, actually mm. means to be under the influence of or to have a demon, not right. the English term possess ownership. Uh, oh, okay. it, it, so, so when you, out of the great Maxwell White's book, I never will forget that, The Power of the yes. Blood, he addressed that question as well. I write about that in my book on spirit called Spiritual Warfare. Uh, it was one of my books called Spiritual Warfare. So when I look at the term demonization or, or to be possessed with a demon, that means to literally... To have a demon, meaning to be under the influence of a spirit. Our spirit man has the Holy Spirit in it, and a demon cannot enter there. But a person Mm. can have a demonic bondage to a lesser or greater degree. And when I say to a lesser or greater degree, anywhere from, as you said, oppression, obsession, that type of thing, then it can get to the point until a demon has to be extracted out of the person, meaning mm-hmm. literally commanded to go. And the reason why that demon leaves that Christian is because only the believer has the power to get it cast out and it stands. If you were a sinner trying to get a demon cast out and refuse to change your sinful life, the demon has easy access to just keep coming, keep staying. That's why they say deliverance is the children's brain. Ah. Oh, my goodness. 609-614-3801. Again, beloved, 609-614-3801. Here on the Life Radio Network, 92.9 FM, 1460 AM. Um, We have with us tonight um, the Honorable Dr. Apostle Ivory Hopkins, all the way from the uh, beautiful city and state of Bridgetown, Delaware. And those of you who live in the Delaware, uh, Washington, D.C. metropolitan area, if you are looking for a home church, it would behoove all of you to uh, call 
this great man of God, pilgrimsministry.org, pilgrimsministry.org, and, and, and reach out to this great apostle through uh, First, uh, First Lady Hopkins, and they will minister to you, uh, praise God, deliverance, which is the children's bread. Uh, man of God, can we get to a few questions here tonight? Yeah, oh, I, my. I, 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 man of God, can I ask one big, big, big favor from you? You take your time. Go ahead. Go ahead. I would like to say quickly the signs that you that you have an active spirit of lust. I would like yes. to read just a small list. It's not long. Now, Take these are the signs that you have an active spirit of lust. Number one, your mind is constantly bombarded by lust, and it's hard for mm. you to pull down by crucifixion, repentance, or prayer. Your mind oh is constantly bombarded. When it's demonic bondage, crucifixion, Prayer, fasting, and Bible study does not stop the pressure upon the victim. <laughs> you constantly repent, but keep. You constantly repent, but keep uncontrollably doing the same sin that you hate. This is completely different than trials or temptation, with uh, which are not de- a demon, but a part of your self life and flesh. Number two. In the pulpit during worship, you're being hit with strong, lustful thoughts. In the pulpit, while the anointing is high, that lust in you is still bothering you. Number three, you find yourself lusting after a brother or a sister you love in the Lord, but can't stop, can't seem to stop while feeling disgusted and ashamed. Next, your body reacts with arousals during a simple hug of the opposite sex or same sex. This can also happen to believers who need to have homosexual spirits cast out of them. Right. Do you understand? This is so deep. These are some of the characteristics. Um, Your sleep and your dream life is constantly invaded by lustful images. It's constantly invaded by lustful images about a person which, which, which seems as if they are physically with you, so vivid that you're, tr- that, that you're troubled because it seems as if it's real. Those are some oh, of the characteristics that you have an active spirit of lust. Not a thought that came across your mind, my friend. No, no, no. This is not a thought that came across your mind. This is not, oops, Satan, I rebuke you or self, get down. Uh Uh-uh. This is not, (laughs) oh my gosh, she's attractive. I'm not going to do that. No, no, no. I'm talking about this thing is driving you. You need deliverance, buddy. Hey, Pastor, leader, five-fold leader, you need deliverance when you do a revival at somebody's church. And, and, and set yourself up to get with one of the members at the hotel before you leave town. You need deliverance. Oh, my goodness up, gracious. End up, Go ahead, end up after a conference in a gentleman's club or getting high to have sex. You need Uh-oh. deliverance, preacher. You need deliverance. Oh, oh my goodness. Now, Signs some of these of things I am history. saying, you know Go why ahead. I'm saying them so boldly? Because these are actual, real deliverance cases that I've had to help people with. Actual, mm-hmm. not what I heard, not what somebody else's book wrote. Actual deliverance cases. And there are some of you, five-fold ministry gifts, that are listening at me now. Some of you sisters have been taken out through your insecurity, through your rejection. You've been perverted. And you have been molested, you have been seduced, and pulled in to a preacher that had a predator spirit that never got delivered. And I maintain to tell you, don't get mad with the church. There's preachers out here that, that are talking about this truth and were saying it openly. We, we are mm. sorry this happened to you, but please don't blame God-anointed preachers who are saying, this is not God, this is not right, I rebuke it, I will gladly pray for all of y'all's deliverance, but I will not validate a preacher's actions in this manner. Man of God, mm. I'm, there it is. Oh, and it gets back to, as we are uh, dissecting the signs of sexual addiction in ministry, 
who counsels the counselor tonight with uh, Apostle Dr. Ivory Hawkins here and only here on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. And it gets back to you don't do what you do because you have a demon. You often get demons because of what you're doing. And it gets back to that one of the signs of a generation or curse slash stronghold within the family bloodline is that you cannot pinpoint the origin of it. And um, so, so many questions tonight. One of our uh, listeners, his name is Nathan, all the way from Copenhagen, Denmark. His question for you, uh, Apostle, that what are the roots um, of uh, sexual addiction? Again, uh, he said, it, what, are, what are the roots of that? <laughs> Nathan, some of the roots of sexual abuse co- covers anywhere from being brought up in a home where there is strong, authoritative, and, uh, and abuse operating, both verbally and physically. Often, sex is used, just like alcohol or drugs, as a way to get away from pain. People use sexual perversion to ease pain. And then often, sometimes, there are people who, have, uh, who are in a family that that lust demon, that particular predatory spirit, has been there for generations. In Delaware, we had in Delaware arrested and in jail right now a pediatrician that raped 100 babies in Delaware. Oh, my God. The damage that he did was so powerful that when our Delaware police went to bust his place, his office, where there were videos of this being done to these children. The videos that they did, what, uh, what he did to these children was so vile that the, some of the police officers had to get counseling. And, mm-hmm. and, and now let me say something. I'm going to say it on your broadcast. Take your time. And I, I say this humbly. I know and I expect that in the latter few years, I will be ministering to you many of his victims, because some of them are our own people. Are you understanding? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I will be ministering to the generation of these babies that he has. He didn't just penetrate their little body. He penetrated their emotional growth, the human being who they are. He did. it, It was more than a penetration. It was a destruction and a dismantling of the soul. That's what this perversion does. Once that thing is done, the rejection will cause some of them to become promiscuous and not understand why. It will cause some of them to have a strange propensity to certain sexual feelings in their body and not know why they desire it because their body has been violated already. If any of you understand uh, the, 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 the theater, the drama of being raped and molested, it affects yes. your marriage. It affects the intimacy of the family. I know of one lady who was raped so bad that she was scared to bathe her own naked child simply because she was molested by someone who should have been protecting her as a child. This thing goes deep. One who has been raped by their father will be afraid of the baby's father bathing by the baby. In other words, she will be petrified of her own husband with his own children. It's more than just a moment we're talking about. It's more than just a deliverance service. This is why I say it takes counseling. It takes deep, godly inner healing. And please don't get me tied up with that New Age word, inner healing. That means the <laughs> healing of the damaged emotion by the Holy Ghost. It takes quite a bit. It takes patience when you marry this person. Because mm. you can do, you can touch them in a way that can trigger the memory of what happened to them. In North Carolina, I was ministering one time, and a young lady's brother put a pillar over her head, and she mopped the floor with him. Her mom called me and said, what in the world is wrong? Would you please pray for my daughter? She went crazy on her brother. When I sat with mom and them and was praying for her, I ended up, a secret came out that I did not want to know. 
But the secret came out that she wept and broke and said, that's the same way my stepfather used to rape me. He'd put a pillow over my head and hold me down. And she said, I was asleep. And when he put that pillow over my head, all of those feelings came back. This is people. This is this is ministry. This is why the Bible says in Luke four eighteen that it came to men the broken heart to undo the heavy burden and to let the oppressed go free. It's Ooh, my God, I'm telling you. Uh, Global Spiritual Revolution Radio at Yahoo.com. Again, beloved, Global Spiritual Revolution Radio at Yahoo.com. Continue to send in those questions. Our next caller, uh, listener, uh, she's sending, she's all, she's, her name is Maria. She's from Riga, Latvia. And she has a problem. Her problem is, is that when she smells a certain smell, Upon a man in her home church, she's triggered in anger. Um, why is she, so what she's saying, how can she overcome the triggers of smelling a certain cologne that a certain brother who has no intentions for her, toward her, but there's a, there's a trigger in her. How that, can she overcome that? Oh. The, the chemical components in the smell that she's smelling actually is associated with some emotional attack that took place with someone who had that particular smell. And in the name of Jesus, we ask the Father to heal her damaged emotion. Father, gently by your spirit, for God, you do surgery like no one else can. I pray for her now, right across this radio wave, that the anointing of God heal her from the manifestation of whoever and whatever they did to her as a small child. And that particular smell was the memory activator that she has left from the abuse. I ask this in the name of Jesus. Lord God, go into the spirit, O Father, through your Holy Spirit, and go get the young child, the young girl, the person at whatever age she was, and Lord God, you said in your word when we was a child, we speak as a child, we understood as a child, but when we became grown or mature, we put away childish things. In the name of Jesus, help her to put away the childish things, the childish womb, the hidden secret that is connected to this activating smell that is related to abuse in Jesus' name. And I thank you. And I command the tormenting spirits to leave her now. Heal the emotion, O God. Heal the wound in her soul, O God. But every demon activating and marching up in that smell, using it as condemnation, using it as guilt, Mm. using it as torture, cut out now. In Jesus' name, amen. Signs of sexual addiction in ministry. Who counsels the counselor here with our apostle and teacher tonight, the Honorable Apostle Dr. Ivory Hopkins. Uh, Next question, his name is uh, Edward, and a powerful question he's sending me via email. He's from Prague in the Czech Republic. He's a former skinhead, and he's got multiple tattoos of swat stickers. Uh, he's a minister in his church. Um, should he have those uh, SWAT stickers that those racist um, symbols um, eradicated from his body, or since he's born again, does it, does it make any difference? Uh, what say you, sir? I always tell a person when it comes to tattoos like that, the first obliterating that has to be done is actually obliterate them from your heart, everything that they yeah. mean, everything that they stand for. And if one is able from that point of view, from there to remove them, so do do so. But I do know that it has to start from your heart, and I believe it has. Uh, out of uh, out of pure out of pure respect for others and getting those curse symbols off of you, if you're able to do that to get them off your body, I would strongly suggest it. 
but can one have tattoos who once thought something of them who now don't give a hoot about them and still be saved? The answer is yes. Yes. Mm. But I would recommend getting rid of them. But if you're unable to cosmetically do that because of finances or however, but you, you, brother, you're my brother in the Lord. You're just a brother that used to have tattoos that meant something to you, and now, glory be to God, you have a mark of Christ in your life and in your heart. Now, others might look at you and wonder, but that doesn't mean that's who you are. So we run into that. You know, uh, man of God, when I get questions like that, when I get questions like that, it reminds me of, Do you remember Naaman, the one that was dipped seven times in the Jordan River? Yes. Did you know that Naaman's job was to take the king into the house of Rimon? Mm. Now, what am I saying? God God gloriously healed him, and he knew there was no other deliverer, deliverer, no other God but the God of Israel. But he sends back to the prophet. You can go back and read it in your own time. He goes back to the prophet, and he said, listen. When I there comes a time that I must take the king into the house of Remon, another god. He said, I pray that God pardon me of this because it's his duty, not his faith or his commitment. And what the prophet said, the Lord pardon me of this sin. He used mm-hmm. the power of binding and loosing, the forgiveness of sin, the retaining and releasing of sin in order for him to be able to do what he had to do until he could either do better or do what he had to do knowing he was never bowing to Ramon ever again. Sometimes in life there are situations like tattoos, like other stuff, where a person is caught in a position wherein the person no longer honors none of the mess that they did but they mark themselves. I mean, if you're talking about a real question, brother, here, what are we going to do in the church when a transvestite gives their life to God and decides yeah, to talk about it? What are we going to do? What, what, we, we're going to, we, what you going to spot another surgery? Yeah. Brother, I'm going to tell you, there are, there are transvestites out here who have given their life to the Lord. They just may not have told you. Mm. And they haven't changed the body parts either. Mm-hmm. There are some men that are eunuch for the kingdom of there are some that are made eunuchs for the sake of man, and then there are others who have been made eunuch for the sake of the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Now, chew on that. Mm-hmm. So, so things aren't just oh, black and white, are they, my man? <laughs> See, that, that, and, and, this, and that brings me to my question, man of God. If, if you have a local pastor, let's say one of your spiritual sons comes to you and says, Dad, uh, we have a man or a woman, um, they're born again, they were saved, but they just got let out of prison, and they are on the sex offenders list. Yeah. Should we announce that to the church or no? Um, what say you, man of God? We have had that exact experience, and the church, and we did make the church aware but uh, but we also made a provision for him that he would be able to get ministry which he deserved, mm. and we were and and, and and matter of fact, this brother's gone on going, still going strong with the Lord and doing well. But they knew exactly what his past was, so we didn't make it a. It was how we did it. We had to do it with dignity, and what have you. Because see, here in Delaware, the law with stuff, stuff like that is so strong that I can be arrested. Uh, here goes something that few people know. I saved a five-year-old girl's life that was being molested by her father, and I actually took her father in and turned him in. I did. Mm. Oh, my goodness. Oh, uh, my, my. Go ahead. The district, attorney, the district yes. attorney of the state of Delaware told me, said, uh, uh, Pastor Hopkins, you need to thank the Lord Jesus that you were wise enough to turn him in. Because had we known that you knew Mm. that this five-year-old child was being molested by him, you have, in Delaware, you have no confidentiality when it comes to children being molested. We would have Mm. arrested you just as well. So I I live, not something I heard about. 
something I lived. Mm. Signs of sexual addiction in ministry. Who counsels the counselor here with our, he's no longer a guest here. He is a part of the Global Spiritual Revolution family here in New York City, New York. The Honorable Dr. Apostle Ivory Hopkins as we come in here. Uh, maybe one, one more question here. Um, her name is Rachel. She's, uh, um, she's Nigerian. She's a Nigerian student but lives in Oslo, Norway. Um, she comes from a family um, that practices uh, Western, um, uh, West African witchcraft, okay? And so her, her question is, uh, does the, when, when a couple gets married, jumping all over the broom, is that of God or is that of Satan? Um, because she's engaged in, and her husband wants to jump o- over the broom, but she's feeling um, a little antsy about that. Is that of God or is jumping over the broom of, of, um, of the devil? Now, see, Eagles, the weird, weird thing is I, 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 I love giving intelligent answers when I am informed yes. uh, because I've only saw that from a black southern side, mm. and they never made that coupled with any dedication to a ritual as far as a deity. Right. Um, but, uh, for, but for us, it was just jumping across the broom into their, their marriage, a new life. It was just right. a basic symbolism. I don't know whether there's any, so I'm not that informed. I love giving answers when I know what I'm talking about. So I don't know the significance of it to your culture. Yes. So therefore, I, if, there was a, if there was a significance of that act related to a ritual, to a deity, to a Lodomare, a Shun, a Gun, an Agwe, uh, you know, Dembala, uh, anything like that, uh, or Zili, I could I could get it, but I don't know how to give an informed answer. But I will say this much: yeah. out of out of out of me not get, being able to give an informed answer because I don't have my material with me right now to give an informed answer, mm-hmm. I will say this much: if you are feeling uncomfortable about it, if you're feeling a conviction in your spirit, man, about it, I suggest you talking to your mate and y'all coming up with a comfortable solution. Because if mm. Evelyn told me that it was something we were going to do at the wedding, that she just does not feel it 100%, I would take the time and say, we can do without that. So I, if the Holy Spirit is dealing with you, I would suggest you not not do it. But other, other than that, once again, I'm a, I'm a minister in a setting here that does not have enough information about what that means in your culture. Right. Man of God, I, 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 let me share this with you before uh, we close out here tonight. Again, this has been one of the most powerful uh, shows we've ever had here uh, during the history of Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. I've been in radio for 25 years, and this is um, one of the most powerful and, and one of the most anointed because I feel in my spirit, uh, Apostle, people are being delivered as we speak. Um, a few years ago, I, I, as a matter of fact, I shared this um, with my girlfriend uh, not too long ago that I was suffering from migraine headaches. And I didn't know. I said, Lord, there's no doors open in my life. And, and the Lord said, no, there is a door. I said, wait a minute now. What, what door, Lord? So, you know, he had instructed me uh, to go on a two-day fast, and he would give me the answer. And the answer was this, uh, Apostle. He says the oils that you're buying, right, those oils that you're buying in Harlem, and this is nothing against um, our, our brothers and sisters within Harlem here in New York City, but, he's, but the Holy Spirit said that the uh, oils that you've been purchasing have at the bottom of the oil crushed fingernails of witches, Mm-hmm. Doc, I kid you not. I went back to the seller and said, "Is it true that the oils that you're selling have are mixed, okay, with the crushed, crushed fingernails of witches?" He said, "Yes, because the that represents the DNA 
on the chromosome of a witch blessing the oil. Oh, my. I had to curse that thing off of me, uh, yep. a man of God. So I just wanted to share that because it, it, the Bible says my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge and people bringing in frog basins and pictures and frames exactly. and from Africa. This garbage, and they wonder why um, there's sickness in their home and cancer exactly. and, and Am I correct in saying that, Apostle? I want to share one with you, man of God, before I go. Check this out. Yeah. I was with a very good friend of mine, a powerful deliverance minister, and what have you. Her name is Tina. Sister Tina and myself, we were in Harlem. And once again, this is not a hit in Harlem, but it just so happened we were doing a tent revival on 125th Street on Martin Luther King Boulevard. Mm. So uh, we, we, she said to me, Brother Ivory, I want to show you something. Now, she takes me in this place, and when I walked in, it was a botanica. And when I walked in, there was all kinds of candles and statues and this, that, and the other. All of a sudden, the guy behind the counter starts talking to her in, in, in Spanish or whatever. And he was looking at me. He was going, and, and, I, and, and, I, and she looked at me, and I'm looking at the guy. I'm just standing there looking at stuff. The guy, t- she walks up to me. She said, Brother Ivory. I said, what? She said, he told me to get you out of here. I said, what? She said, wow. he said, you are disturbing the spirits in here. He wants you to get out. I actually mm. was asked to get out because I was disturbing the demons. Mm-hmm. It was the weirdest thing. Wow. But we had one. I was with I was with I was with Pastor Charlie Holzhauser. If any of you know Pastor Charlie Holzhauser when he was alive, powerful deliverance ministry and a dear good friend of mine. I, I was with Apostle, uh, Pastor Charlie Holzhauser and doing uh, a, a tent revival there. But I, like I said, as a young kid, this is how I was brought up, man. You know, guys, I'm going to uh, have to get ready to go and what have you. You can get our book, Who Counsels the Counselor?, on our website at pilgrimsministry.org. And did I share this with you, man of God? We do something that most deliverance ministers that travel like I do don't really do. On our website, there's a section called Counseling and Deliverance. We actually offer, now there is a fee for it, a 45-minute detailed counseling session and deliverance to those who was to sign up for it. And what it is, that we've been doing it now for a couple of years, man of God, and I've mm. probably done uh, probably over two or 3,000 people. Oh, and my Lord. And we've moved mightily. But, and what started me to do it was, I would, I've done a lot of major conferences with my buddies, the, the uh, Apostle John Eckhart, Kim Daniels and them, just a number of the, of the soldiers. I'm getting ready also to do something in Atlanta with some of Derek Prince's people. And there is a, mm. if you would go on on Amazon Prime, Light in the Darkness is a documentary where myself and one of Derek Prince's uh, elders, uh, we minister together a, a documentary about deliverance. It's called mm. Light and the Darkness. And we are preaching the, the apostle that did the filming that did the video and created the documentary. His name is Apostle James Alfred, and he is out of Atlanta. They came down, did an interview with me, did a documentary of my life, and actually had actors acting out some of the stories that I were telling. Wow. Oh, my, it, oh, you know what? Oh. For an old soldier, for an old dog, I am living the best part of my life today than ever. Yeah. Me and Evelyn, I'm telling you, please, don't feel sorry for us. Me and Evelyn are, is loving the ride. <laughs> loving it. We're saved. Hey, hey, bro, mom and pop is saved. We ain't looking for nothing but Jesus. Hey, Amen. Yeah. Heaven, heaven is our home, and we're just finishing this journey. Oh, my God. And that was Dr. Uh, Ivory Hawkins, a true uh, 21st century apostle. Go to his website right now, pilgrimsministry.org pilgrimsministry.org and buy up everything that they have. Their DVDs, CDs, books, everything that you can get your hands on, hands upon, uh, saints of God. It will behoove you uh, to have these books in your library as a young 
Deliverance Ministry, pilgrimsministry.org, pilgrimsministry.org. And if people want to reach out, again, for deliverance sessions, for deliverance counseling, how can they do that uh, real you, quickly? You can go to my website. It will, it will say Counseling and Deliverance. And you can go on that website. Matter of fact, I'm going to put it up and put my eyeballs in it so I say it just right. Amen. Ooh. Our website is pilgrimsministry.org, and there is a section that says deliverance and counseling mm-hmm. sessions. And when you go on there, it explains it. It explains the, the fee, the donation to help our ministry. And by the way, if our ministry is helping you, it should be no problem you helping us. For helping. The that truth be right. told, y'all. You cannot find a deliverance minister, how do I say this humbly, Oh my! that's doing what I do, the way that I do it, that you can call just like that. If so, call them. But I'm going to tell you, you, they're not there, simply because they've been called to do other things. The Holy Spirit Mm. touched my heart to do this, not for money from people, but he touched my heart to do this because many people that I would do in those mass deliverance couldn't get 10 minutes to talk to now one of us preachers. Not 10 minutes. But on here, you can sign up, pay the fee, for a 45-minute detailed session. For a 45-minute detailed session, talking not to one of my staff, not to two or three of my ministers, but talking directly to me and what have you. Mm. And, man of God, we have been doing this, and it is we oh, say, so I, when oh. we do that counseling, we give you what we counsel and say to you. We give you the recording of it, so you, so you can go tell it to your pastor or, or whatever you want to do. But because we ain't gonna do nothing in hiding, and we've had tremendous deliverances. We actually do them all over the world, and my wife has co- coordinated these sessions from uh, uh, from Australia. From Timbuktu, we've had people call in and sign up all over the world. So if you were interested in a counseling, a deliverance, and counseling session, amen, go on our website at pilgrimsministry.org, and you can sign up for it. But do not get mad because if, if you have to give a donation for my time, because my time is valuable, but you can come yeah. to one of my services, not even give an offering and fill the prayer line, and I'll pray all day long. But for 45 minutes of my life, there's going to be a fee, a donation fee for my time. Oh, God bless my you. goodness. God bless you, oh, uh, oh, my, uh, my apostle. Again, that was the honorable uh, apostle Ivory Hopkins, all the way from Bridgetown, Delaware. As we discussed tonight, the powerful topic of signs of sexual addiction in ministry who counsels the counselor. Even the counselor uh, hey. needs to be counseled. Oh, my God. And so then we will see you next week here on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. I want to announce that Kanye West, who was scheduled to come next week, uh, has rescheduled to come to, his, uh, to the original date, uh, which would be the third Thursday in April. That would be the 16th. Kanye West will be a guest here on Global Spiritual Revolution via by phone. If it, if it changes that he can come into the, to the studio, we will let you know. So mark your calendars on for April the 16th, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Kanye West. Okay, we'll be uh, just telling us about his salvational experience. So uh, stay tuned for that next uh, Thursday if the rapture of the church doesn't take place. Dr. Michael Brown will be back with us as we talk about uh, Jezebel's war with America. Apostle, we love you. And and, Man of God, before I would go, I would love to pray a prayer of of blessing and release and and, and breakthrough. Father, in the name of Jesus, first of all, I thank you for this honorable radio broadcast. I thank, thank you for the work and the labor that he's doing, Father. Lord God, let it be blessed, sold to. Let it be built and strengthened. Now, Lord God, there are brothers and sisters out there that are suffering from sexual addiction, that are sex suffering from abuse, that are suffering from being messed with in church by the preacher. I ask yes. you to heal them, Father. Lord God, I ask you to break the strongholds of rape and molestation. And I command every predator Ooh. spirit that has been lurking, pulling, hiding, that lurking through the generations, hiding in the closets of the family mm. line. 
I command you to go now. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that in every village, rituals that have been done, that have activated these spirits, that have caused polygamy and all kinds of other manifestations, that cause curses to be sent to attack the people. Let God loose them and set them. And God, I give you praise and glory for being a deliverer. Let somebody's heart, mind, and eyes be open that they would not keep hiding when they're chasing the streets, picking up prostitutes. Deliver that pastor. Deliver that leader, Father, because they're my brothers. They're my sisters, God. They just need to be free. Amen and amen. Thank you for having me on, man of God. God bless. Uh, I'm telling you, you know what, uh, saints of God and to all of us, we heard a powerful um pack two hours time goes by so fast and and so um we will be with you uh next week all right um even though i will be out of town i, I was supposed to be out of town this week then push the next week and and i'm praying for wisdom because of this um virus that's out but you know what we cannot allow that to stop us all right so uh god willing dr michael brown will be with us on um uh, next Thursday and to our global spiritual revolution partners thank you so, so much for your patience tonight uh, please sell uh, what you can with us $50 $100 uh, to $300 whatever God purposes in your heart to give into the global assignment of global spiritual revolution radio because it takes money to sustain this global effort uh, that we're touching uh, in awakening souls all over the world. All right, go to paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. Again, beloved, paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. One more time, paypal.me forward slash GSRR Media Group. When you give unto the Lord, he will give you more to give. So God bless you guys. We see. We will definitely see you here next week here and only here on Global Spiritual Revolution Radio. Good night here from New York City.